Guys, you want to launch this bitch? Uh, do you see that all the way off to the top left? That is why you don't shoot <laughs> sideways. up guys so today is a pretty exciting day I always say that but today's a pretty exciting day because we have our first um, performance part for the a90 Supra now all the parts so far have been cosmetic stuff right and actually all the videos so far has been like something cosmetic related right like the wing has essentially been the only real video for the Supra but um, I recently bought a performance oriented part for the Supra. It's honestly my first time installing a performance part by myself. It should be pretty easy. What is the part? It is the MST intake and turbo inlet pipe for the Supra. I know it's upside down. Let me just stop. Boom. MST turbo in MST cold air intake and turbo inlet pipe for the Supra. Um, I was considering between this one and the Arma Speed one, but I decided to settle for this one because it was a little bit more fair on the price. I mean, it's a cool air intake. You're not gonna make huge power gains from this. Um, however, they did say 14 um, increase in torque by 14, so that is pretty interesting. So I did buy this. Install video is coming soon. We're about to do it later today, but first. Uh, we're gonna get some stuff to eat, and there is like a uh, shit. There is like a, I guess a food, like a food truck thing going on, and there's a really good wine place that we want to stop by. So, yeah, check it out. God, it's quick. Sorry, it is the next day. Basically what happened was um, I had to do some stuff and when I got the tools, time and time just eluded me, so I couldn't really do the install video. But we have the stupid all parked up, put open, I have all the tools. Let's get working. First thing you do, you gotta take off these guys. So these guys are bolts. There's one here and there's one there. We gotta take those guys off. I am using a socket wrench. Um, what's the size actually? Half, half inch socket wrench. Um, just gotta take these guys off, um, and that's for starters. And once we take the brace off, we take off this guy, which I mentioned before, and then we take off the sensor, and then this whole thing just kind of pops off. So let's get that done. Don't forget, don't lose these too. It's gonna be a pain in the ass if we lose these. A long ass hole. Get 
get something like a blanket or a, some sort of blanket cover. Just because you don't want to damage the front end of your car. So we have this blanket cover here that protects you from all the scrapes while you're essentially just over the car. So get one of, don't forget to do that. It's kind of an extra step, but it's worth it in my opinion. Looking boring. All right, brace off. Second bolt. Just chilling. Brace is off. Like I mentioned before, we got to get this guy off with a nice flathead and then pop off the sensor. This coupling comes off. All right, so one thing you guys have to remember is when you're removing the airbox, this coupler right here, um, because you know I took off that coupler that I said with the flathead, um, it's really stuck on there, so you kind of have to really just push it apart. Don't be scared. And then this whole thing just comes right off like that. Boom. It's off. And that is your airbox. Everything is held in by these rubber grommets. Again, take this guy off. We actually convert this guy over. We bring this sensor over. Um, going through the actual thing. This is the sensor that we unclipped. There's your little turbo right there. It's kind of chilling. Pretty decent. So much space here. It's kind of crazy. All right, so I fucked up. So I was a bit of a dumbass. So I have the V2 model, which basically is, where the fuck did it go? Um, is this guy. And this guy replaces all of this. So I forgot. Um, this is our new updated model where this replaces all of this. And really, this is one annoying part. You have to get this clip out and it, it sits like this behind it. So it's basically kind of connected like this, right? Um, well, more like, yeah, more like this. Um, how the fuck is it connected? Yeah, I would say it's connected like this, like, like kind of from this view. This is the view you're seeing it from the hood of the car. And you have to get this guy out, which is very fucking fragile. This is actually a clip that I broke and I'll show you guys. However, on the forums, it's not too bad. It doesn't cause any damages. You can actually just zip tie the clip because the um, breathing tube that's supposed to go in here um, is now supposed to go in here. And because I broke this like plastic clamp, very fragile. Um, you could technically just zip tie it on. It's nothing too crazy. It shouldn't throw any errors. Um, but yeah, this guy just sits in the back like like this, securing it. So I'll kind of show you guys in a second. Yeah, so this guy kind of just sits like this, right? All secured. And all you have to do is get a flathead. Once you get a flathead, you can kind of just pop it off. Pop it up. So my strategy was I popped it this way, meaning it lifted up like this. So one was hanging around like that. And because you have your whole intake out, you have your, all this intake box out right here, and it sits right there. Let me just brighten this up. It sits right here in this area. Fuck, you guys still can't see it. It sits right here in this area. I kind of pushed that first one up to the left, and then I went around to this angle from this point of view, right? and I pop the other one downwards. So from this point of view, if you're looking at it right here, I just popped it downwards. So this way down. And that essentially takes the clip off and then when you're here, you just grab it from underneath and just grab it and just pop it off. Because it's just basically um, flexible metal and it'll just come off easily. So that's the hardest part in my opinion. This is also pretty hard because I broke this clip and I'll show you guys. So if you go over here, um, this guy is the tube to, is the breathing tube and it's pretty fucked up because I broke it. Um, this is the part I broke, sad times. But don't freak out, you could buy a replacement. Apparently techs break these all the time and on the forums, it just happens. Um, I don't know how to safely get this out I used a pair of pliers, kind of gripped it, right? So I would grip it like this, right? And now I just kind of press the um, tube over there downwards. So I'll press it downwards while gripping it just so I can push it away. 
kind of leverage it. In doing so, I think I clamped it a little bit too tight and I just kind of like shattered it because I did this motion and it just broke off. But again, you can just zip tie it. And one more clip. This guy right here. This guy is, I think they put a little bit of glue on this from the factory because when I took it off, there was some like adhesive. Don't worry about this guy. This guy could just float. It's just really just a uh, supporting clip to uh, make sure this doesn't really dangle as much. Really don't have to worry about him. He's good. And there's there's not really a section on this silicon like inlet pipe where this where that clip just can chill on. So you're good. But yeah. All right. So next thing I did was get the coupler, which um, we don't have to worry about this guy anymore. Everything on that guy is not really relevant to us. So forget about him. Got the coupler, added it onto the silicone turbo inlet pipe. And we're gonna pop this onto the opening we made right there. All right, so I think I got it in there pretty well. Don't be afraid, really just muscle it. Um, if you took out the air filter, it should be kind of already lubricated enough. The stock turbo inlet pipe has a bit of like lubrication on it. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it. You see that metal thing right there? That clamp or that just metal brace looking thing? That is the the uh, clamp to the inlet pipe that I just installed. I'm gonna fucking move this sensor out of the way because we gotta do that, deal with that guy later. But all I gotta do now is tighten it. I'm gonna readjust that uh, screw right there so I have better access to tighten that screw. And then once I tighten it, re-add in that uh, again guy that I broke off, that bung. All right, so that bad boy is in. Bada bing, bada boom. I did zip tie it a little bit there. Uh, if you wanna look in the back, there's a zip tie. It's kinda of holding some of that in place. I don't know if you need it to be honest with you because it was pretty snug anyways. And honestly, like, the little breathing thing that I broke off, like realistically, like I don't really know how much security it honestly brings. So I highly doubt it's not the same. Like I highly doubt that you breaking it off and you zip tying it, like is going to be any different. I think the zip tie is basically the same thing. It's honestly pretty fra fragile, I was surprised. But tying that down, so that sucker's tying down. Next thing you know, gotta install the heat shield. So, um, so when it comes to the heat shield, um, you actually have to take this guy and this guy off because there is a bolt you need to access here. So let me just do that real quick with my pry tool. I almost broke this one, not surprised. Got these two guys back then. Lock this bolt up right here. It should go underneath. So this plate, right, should go underneath the bolt. Just to let you know. Once you lock that in, this guy right here, so there's a washer and a bolt you're supplied with, as well as a washer and a nut you're supplied with. On the top, put the washer bolt in. On the bottom, put the washer and nut in. The washer should be making contact with this box, just to let you know. And so tighten that up, and that's basically it. If you guys are wondering why there's a gap here, that's just a fitment. Don't freak out about this. This is normal. Um, all right, so we have that in. We have this divider in. Now we gotta actually get the uh, intake pipe as well as the filter and then we'll do some intake noises to see how it sounds like intake pipe filter and then I cannot forget this fucking guy the sensor this is my first time installing an intake by myself kind of sucky that I'm doing it on such an expensive car like the Supra but got some pointers for y'all so we're at the point right now where I'm actually just let me fit this camera around I'm actually just installing the air filter right so we have the air filter installed soon i just got to tighten that hose clamp here's the problem and i don't know if mst i hopefully you can take this feedback in a positive manner i noticed on your older versions before the v2 came out where you have the full silicone in uh turbo inlet pipe that you gave hardware mine didn't come with any hardware i don't know if that's normal now because you guys are just trying to you know whatever but um, you are using the existing uh, T style um, screws for your, your uh, mass airflow sensor. And I noticed the fitment isn't perfect. So what I mean by that is for this guy, this is the um, original you know, OEM screw. And there is actually a little bit of a gap on the side because what I noticed is, the, at least on mine, the 
the depth of the screw hole isn't as deep and it stops here. And I tried to screw it in deeper and then I snapped it off. I snapped the head of the screw off here. So I can't use that screw hole anymore because it's broken. And so I had to zip tie it to make sure the map doesn't fly around or you know it's secured. So parts are gonna break, I understand that, but having a little bit more of an in-depth guide really helps the user out when they're trying to install this shit. Um, so right here, figure 19. Install a mass airflow into intake pipe. Okay. Figure 20. Install intake pipe. Right. So the assumption is you're using this previous screws, right, that you took off from your OEM intake pipe over there onto the new uh, MST intake pipe. So my assumption is that they're not giving you any hardware anymore. When the before videos I saw, they give you hardware. That kind of annoyed me because, again, I broke off the screw head and I had to zip tie the mass airflow sensor on. So can't do shit about that, but a little bit of warning for that. Also another um, update. So it does come with a hose clamp, right? And I guess they realized that a lot of people were breaking this little guy off, you know, what I broke off. So that hose clamp does help secure the bung onto the, um, um, the, the take off this whole entire heat shield again, take off these bolts, reinstall it. And now I'm a little bit more confident that it's not going to be that much of a problem, but yeah, so I guess that's a plus. It does come with uh, a hose clamp for you to secure that. Last part, have the filter on, tighten this up. Let's hear some sounds. Tightened up, there's a little gap here, which is, I guess, good. Putting this airflow sensor in. Oh shit, that's not how it goes in. How do I put this in without not breaking this motherfucker? Okay. All right, sensor's there. Uh, let me see if I turn this guy. No, nope, you know what, that's just staying there. Okay, all right, walking over. Hopefully this doesn't fucking throw a code. It's my ass. I'm so tired. Everything looks good. Hood's obviously open. What's this? Okay, okay, nothing crazy. Some, let's hear some sounds. All right, so this is what it sounds like under load. I'm in sport mode. I'm gonna take this turn and get some gas. Here we go. I don't know if you guys were able to hear that. Okay, let's give it another pull. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it definitely did like open up a lot more induction noise. You do hear it just start whooshing. It's a very nice sound. You also hear the let off where it goes like Bleh. But when you're under load and actually giving it some gas and it's going, that's when you really hear the intakes. It just open up and um, all that induction noise. But uh, yeah, I'll do some flybys later. sounds way louder if you obviously take off that top, but overall it's pretty decent. Super all parked up here, all clean. Check it out. Bam, all clean. Ugh, man, I get so many fucking scratches on this car. It's so annoying. Just, this long nose design. It just It's just going to happen. Like, even this guy. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a scratch there. Like, ah, I got to get that covered up with, you know, touch-up paint. But, um, so, why did I get the MST intake over the couple of other options there are in the market right now? Two things is price. This intake I got was around the like 450 to 500 mark. 
um, and the sound. Uh, I really was looking for this intake because I wanted the most like turbo flutter sound I can get, and this intake gives me that turbo flutter sound. Um, it's really loud, actually. I don't know if you guys can hear it that well on camera, but it, it is really loud. Um, and the price, in my opinion, was pretty decent. Our Arma Speed, which is the other one that's really loud and that's compared to this, um, it's like average price I saw was like 600 bucks, which I'd rather put that extra 100 bucks from this intake towards like an exhaust or a downpipe. That's just my logic um, because I'm just looking for the sound. But, you know, there are, are also other brands. If you want to go a little bit more bougie, there's Dynan, which I think is actually a little bit cheaper. And, you know, Dynan's a really big BMW aftermarket tuning company. Um, AWE with their S-Flow, open box intake, or even Cherry, um, which their intake is like $1,500. It's kind of insane for their intake. But that's why I went with MST. Fitment was pretty good. Just some of the instructions was kind of unclear, like, transferring over that screwdriver hardware from the MAF onto the new intake pipe. But just go slow, try not to break anything, and if you do, like those small little clips from the breather tube, there are replacements for that, so not no worries really. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys liked the video. Um, next video I'm trying to do is an exhaust. I have an exhaust in mind. I just really have to solidify on it and hopefully get a good deal on it because exhausts for this car are pretty expensive and there are cheaper exhausts like the engine as well as um, I think a 90 shop makes one like a generic one but there are cheaper exhausts that you can get but i kind of want a good quality exhaust because for me like that's something that i really value like a good nice deep tone um both in normal and in sport mode when you can open it up so that's gonna be the next video hopefully i can secure one down um so yeah stay tuned for that and let me know what you guys think of the intakes or intake sound um, let me know which intake you guys bought. If you have an A90 Super, what you guys think. Uh, if yours is louder or not, definitely uh, put it in the comments below. And yeah, see you guys later. Peace. Check that out. Oh my god, Joey! Oh, Joey just walked through a bunch of fucking Joey spiders. Joey literally just walked through all these spiders right here. <laughs> <laughs> Joey! Shit! <laughs> oh shit, Joey! You Joey! Joey! Dude, look at how big that spider is! Joey! Oh my god. <laughs>